So, kids, like a good old drunk dad, I'm going just to continue with my bedtime stories. Are you ready for this? I am going to jump from time to time. Because you can. But then, now, and sometimes, that was chapter one that I was reading. Was it? Was it? Chapter one, the lost secrets. And then, A poor candidate for the state of darkness. Is that what it is? Cheers to the queers, applause to the whores, a huck, huck, huck to a jolly good fuck. When we were made Freemasons, we both underwent the process experienced by every institute to the craft. For at least 250 years, as part of these ceremonies, we were asked to wear, as men of honour, that we would divulge Sorry, that we would not divulge any of the secrets of Freemasonry to the outside world. And we are very aware of the information we give. Here, yeah, maybe considered by some Masons. A betrayal of those secrets. However, however, the United Grand Lodge of England considers only the means of recognition to be the protected secrets of the order, and no one could falsely pass themselves off as a Freemason after reading this book. It is necessary to explain the rituals of the considerable detail as they form the basis of all our research. Some of these words given are secret identification devices. But we do not point out which words should be used in which circumstances. So we have done our very best to meet the spirit of our vows. In any event, we gave our agreement to maintaining these secrets on the understanding that they would not interfere with our freedom as mor moral, civil, or religious agents and were our vows to prevent us sharing such important discoveries as we have now made they would have most certainly interfered with those freedoms dot Dot Dave. Although we joined different lodges several years apart, we recall identical experiences. This is how it felt. We have used T. Sorry, delete that. I. We have used I to stand for both of us. 
have you not been interviewed by a panel of past masters several months before I was now ready to be made a Freemason. What I was joining was virtually unknown to me. The only firm question that have had been put to me was do you believe in God? I did, and everything proceeded from there to the point where I was now standing with the God who was banging with the hilt of a drawn sword on the large door of the temple, seeking permission for me to enter. I was hoodwinked. That is blindfolded. And dressed in loose fitting white trousers and top. Oh, if I even knew this, I have a top and a trouser like this. One foot was in a simple slipper. Oh my God. I need to make pictures with one foot and a slipper. This um, expression is called the slip hood. 707. My left leg was exposed to the knee and the left breast of the tunic had been drawn aside so that my chest was bared on that side. Unbeknown to me, a hangman's noose had been put around my neck and draped down my back. I'd been relieved of all my metal objects and I was now ready to be led to the temple. We learned that this mode of dress, the rough smock, was a running noose down the back of my neck, was exactly how the medieval heretic would have been treated by the Inquisition prior to making his confession. I recall how I sensed a large number of people present. I felt very vulnerable. I felt a cold point press on the skin of my chest. Do you feel anything? The voice in front of me asked and the whisper in my ear gave a formalized reply which I repeated out aloud. I do. Then let this sting on your conscience as well as in instant death should you ever betray any of the secrets now about to be imparted on you. Another voice from another side of the room then spoke. I recognized it was as belonging to the worshipful master. As no man can be made a mason unless the free unless he is free and mature of age. 
I now demand of you. Are you a free man, and are you a full age of 21 years? I am. Having answered that question so satisfactorily, there are others which I shall immediately proceed to put to you, which I trust you will answer with equal candor. Do you seriously declare on your honor that, unbiased by the improper solicitations of friends against your own inclinations, uninfluenced by mercenary or any other unworthy motive, you freely and voluntarily offer yourself as a candidate for the mis mysteries and privileges of Freemasonry. Do you further seriously declare on your honor that you are prompted to solicit these privileges from a favorable opinion preconceived of our order, a general desire for knowledge, and a sincere wish to render yourself more extensively serviceably to your fellow creatures? I do. The dagger that had been held firmly to my chest was removed, although it did not, I did not know at that time. But the news, called the Cable Toe, remained around my neck. The man to my right whispered to me to kneel, and a short prayer was said, invoking the blessing of the Supreme Governor of the Universe, God, described in a neutral way, so that he is equal and equally accessible to members of any mono monotheistic 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 religion. The ceremony produced with my help of guiding me around the perimeter of the temple, pausing three times to introduce me to the poor candidate in a state of darkness. Although I could not see it, the center of the temple floor was laid out with a central rectangle of black and white squares. On the eastern edge of the worshipful master's pedestal in the south sat the junior warden and in the west the senior warden both the lesser pedestals after my three laps i was brought still blindfolded hoodwinked To the worshipful master's pedestal where I asked, having been in the state of darkness, what is the pre predominant wish of your heart? I was asked, not I asked. Once again the answer was whispered to me in the air, light. Then let the blessing be restored. The blindfold was removed from behind and my eyes adjusted. I would see that I was in front of the worshipful master who immediately drew my attention to the 
emblematic emblematic lights of Freemasonry which were explained as being the volume of the sacred law for Christian candidates this is the Bible the square and the compasses he then told me that I had now attained the rank of entered apprentice Freemason. The first of three degrees through which I would have to pass before being accepted as a full master Mason. The secret signs Gris, grips, passwords and of the first degree were then explained to me and I was told that the left hand pillar of the of that stood in the porchway of King Solomon's temple was simple significance and a special significance to Templars. And that I think I will end this. I thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the little bell for notifications. And then you can have a little bit of bedtime stories with Lionel Royale. Please comment if you like this or not. Ciao for now. Talk to you.